it looks like we could be moving closer to a Brexit deal. From what you've heard, and I appreciate it's just reports, is this something the SNP could potentially back if it was then put to a confirmatory referendum? Well, we've made it very clear there is no such thing as a good Brexit. Scotland voted to remain in the European Union, 62 to 38 percent, and we've no desire to see ourselves dragged out against our wishes. Um, leaving the European Union is going to be damaging for jobs, it's going to damage our communities. There are economic experts have said there could be a hit of up to 100,000 jobs in Scotland, people being £2,300 a year worse off. This is not a price that's worth paying for what is Tory ideology. Um, we need to stay in the European Union and we should certainly be staying in the single market and the customs union, which is the least worst option for us. But let's wait and see what happens this week. Um, we haven't seen a, a deal come forward from Boris Johnson the way that we, they've been talking about. I think over the course of the next 24, 48 hours we'll get more clarity on this, but I'd just express a degree of caution that people are expecting that we're going to get a deal before the end of the week. And what I would say to Boris Johnson and to the Conservatives, that they must respect the Benn Act, that Parliament has taken back control and has legislated to make sure that we don't leave on an no-deal basis at the end of October. And that is the first priority that we face. Talking about the uh, Benn Act, and that, of course, is the act compelling uh, Boris Johnson, uh, according to the Act, uh, to seek this extension if he doesn't get a deal. Um, if he does not request that extension, my interview with Jeremy Corbyn uh, made pretty clear that they are going to be calling a vote of confidence in the Prime Minister shortly after. If that happens and Boris Johnson loses, would you back Jeremy Corbyn as an interim Prime Minister? I think it's really about focusing on what the priorities are and the priority is to get that extension letter signed and once that's done as quickly as possible to move on to an election. Now under our constitution we need to have a caretaker administration. I don't think it's actually so much about who forms that caretaker administration but it's making sure that we work together, that collectively we recognise the responsibilities that we have. And The SNB for the last few weeks have been calling for a motion of no confidence because quite simply Boris Johnson is not someone that we can trust. Um, he hasn't given any, any indication, any clear indication anyway, that he will observe the Benn Act. The simplest thing for the opposition to do is recognise our responsibility by having that motion of no confidence and removing this toxic Prime Minister from 10 Downing Street by taking the keys of 10 Downing Street away from him. And let's put this back to the people. Let's have a general election, which we in the SNP are absolutely desperate to see, to give the people of Scotland and indeed the rest of the United Kingdom their say on what they want to happen going forward. And I think for us, what we've seen is the chaos and the confusion of Westminster over the course of the last three and a half years. And we want to put to the people of Scotland, it should be their right to choose their future, whether or not they wish to see Scotland as an independent country in Europe, or to carry on with this Brexit buruk that we see and this taking us to towards the cliff edge that Boris Johnson wants to do. We are a European country and we wish to remain so. Um, what should come first then, an election or a second referendum? Well, I think in terms of the way our politics work, it's going to take some time to put up the legislation for a referendum. The first thing to do, the right thing to do, is to have that election, let the people have their say, and then we can move forward from there. But I want that opportunity to take Boris Johnson out of office, and I want the opportunity for the people of Scotland to see very clearly that we want to see in our own future. Sophie, you may well have been aware that there is an opinion poll in the Sunday Times this morning, and it demonstrates that 45% of Scots recognise they'd be better off with Scotland being independent in Europe, against 35% that see their future being better staying within the UK. It's becoming increasingly clear to people here that our economic future, the well-being of our country, is going to be best served by completing that job to independence that started with devolution 20 years ago. Just talking about um, the uh, possibility of a, a UK-wide election for now that you clearly want to see, if that happens, the polls also indicate that there's a pretty good chance there could be a hung parliament. Would you be prepared to support a Jeremy Corbyn administration to try and get into number 10 if he doesn't have the numbers without you? 
well, first and foremost, I think everyone's got to take their own responsibilities and we'll do our job in taking on the Brexiteers, taking on the Conservative and indeed the Labour Party and the Liberal Democrats in Scotland and I'm confident that we will win that election. It's up to the other opposition parties to do the same. We want, of course, to see the end to austerity. We want to see that legislation for an independence referendum because the power to do that must be in the hands of the Scottish Parliament, not in any Prime Minister in London. And, of course, on the basis of a hung Parliament, we'll make sure that we do our job as standing up for Scotland and delivering on the agenda that the SNP will go into this election on. Pretty clear there that you would like to see you know, the possibility of a second independence referendum as part of any of those talks. Uh, in my interview with uh, Jeremy Corbyn, he said he wouldn't consider a second vote on Scottish independence in the first few years of a Labour government. But do you think he's open to it? I think it has to be, and I'd simply say to Jeremy Corbyn, that we have a mandate for an independence referendum already. That was one in the 2016 election, the election to the Scottish Parliament that the SNP won, and there is an independence majority within that Parliament. So I'd simply say to Jeremy, and indeed to anybody else that might be in 10 Downing Street, they have to respect democracy, and they have to respect the right of the people that live in Scotland to determine their own future. We're putting legislation through the Scottish Parliament now that will enable that referendum to take place. That referendum should take place in 2020.